What is the craziest paranormal experience you've had? We were visiting my in-laws around Christmas and we were chatting in their den, having some drinks and catching up. They had a Christmas tree in the corner of the den. Nobody was sitting near it. My husband and father-in-law were sitting in lounge chairs and I was sitting with my mother-in-law on the couch on the opposite side of the tree. The two dogs were napping between us. We were all at least six feet away from the tree. All of a sudden, their Christmas tree begins to violently shake, like someone grabbed the trunk and was shaking the dust off of it. A few ornaments fell to the ground and then it stopped. It shook for a good ten seconds. The thing is, we were the only four in the house. The dogs were sleeping on the couch with us. The tree had been up for at least a week, so no woodland creatures hiding in it, and nothing else in the house shook. No glass clinking, no other rumbling sounds, just the tree. We checked the news to see if there was an earthquake. We checked online, pre-smartphones, and the newspapers, and no reports of an earthquake. We also live in an area where earthquakes are rare. So I have no clue what shook the damn tree. We all saw it. The dogs slept through it. They did not give a F. High school girlfriend says she saw an old man in her house in the study. I laughed it off because her house was no older than 20 years old and how could it be haunted? I jokingly said she saw a wooden carving her parents had that resembled Jesus because she described the man of having a big white beard. A few weeks later, I was walking from the stairs and into the kitchen where she was sitting. Out of the corner of my eye, I see an older man sitting at the head of the table in the dining room. I tell her, but have to rule out my claim, as the seed of belief may have been planted in my head. Months later, her friend from Brazil was visiting. My girlfriend and I were fooling around upstairs, and her friend burst through the door crying. In Portuguese, my girlfriend asks what's wrong, and her friend says she was listening to music with headphones walking around on the main floor when she ran into an old man with a white beard in the study. There was absolutely no way my girlfriend told her friend as she wasn't a believer in the paranormal and didn't make a big deal about it when she told me. To this day, it is the one case in my life where I have to truly believe we all saw something in that house. This sounds crazy, but it is 100% true, at least my narrative. I used to live in a mobile home trailer park growing up. There was a hallway that went from one end of the trailer to the other, with the bedrooms coming off of it on one side. My bed was on the wall opposite the hallway, so I could see into the hallway but not down either side. When I was about maybe six to eight years old, if I stayed awake after my dad went to sleep and started at the doorway, I would start to be able to make out a hand stretching from beyond the doorway in the hall from the right side of the door to the left. The longer I looked, the more of the hand would appear until eventually, over the course of a few minutes, I could see a red and white striped shirt, sweater, sleeve. If I continued to stare, after a longer period, the body of a boy would appear in the doorway. I specifically remember hiding under the covers most nights when this would happen, mostly at the first sight of him. I was never antagonized further than him slowly moving, facing my bed, from the right side of the door to the left, and if I continued to stare, he would eventually disappear beyond the left threshold. We moved out of that trailer into a home when I had just turned nine, and that was the end of it. I never really thought about it, and I never told my dad or anyone else about it, because by the time I had already chalked it up to just seeing things and had thought it was my imagination, I'm sure it probably was, about 15 to 20 years later, my dad and I were talking about his best friend that had lived next door, but sadly just passed away. We started talking about our trailer and the older lady that had moved in after us. My dad said something like, Funny enough, dad's friend told me a few years ago that the woman used to see a little boy in a red and white shirt, like a ghost or something. I was obviously taken aback and told him about what I had seen almost every night for a few years and we were both just a bit shocked at what that might mean. Never experienced anything else, but that completely stumps me was home alone with my old roommate's pit bull, Hamburger. She was very sweet, but would bark at strange noises or if she heard something outside the house. Sometimes a light growl and a few barks if she saw a mouse, rare occurrence, but hey, it was an old house. Anyway, it was like 1.30 p.m. and I was chilling in my room and she started barking. Normally a quick, hey, cut it out, would hush her up, but not this time. So I figured something had riled her up for real went out into the hall and she was looking from the living room down the hall in my direction but past me. 
so I looked where she was looking and couldn't see anything. Hall was mostly dark except the light from my room, halfway down the hall. Looked back at her, and she whimpered for a second. Then out of nowhere, she started growling and barking like I'd never heard before and ran toward me. I was not afraid of her at all and knew she'd never hurt me, but I recoiled a bit until she went a couple of feet past me and continued barking aggressively at the end of the hall. She was not an aggressive dog at all, so this freaked me out, and it was definitely not a mouse, because she was looking around human head height. I went to the living room, turned on all the lights, and sat on the couch, because it was nice and far from the end of the hall. Called her back to me, and she sat by my side, doing a low growl for the next five minutes. When I calmed down and wasn't feeling so alarmed anymore, she refused to come with me to my room. Later that night, woke up to what I swear looked like an adolescent girl in a white dress at the foot of my bed. Here's the catch though. My room at night in that house could get really dark. I shouldn't have been able to see anything as distinctly as that. Only reason I doubt what I saw is because I've suffered my entire life from what I can only refer to as night terrors. It's like sleep paralysis, but only the hallucination part. I'm fully capable of moving, and I'm only half asleep. So I end up doing shit like turning all the lights on and throwing pillows at shit that isn't there. That being the case, I was completely conscious when all that with Hammy went down. And, normally, when I wake up to a hallucination, it's something like a giant spider or a snake in my bed. Rarely is it a hallucinated person, and I'm almost always terrified no matter what I'm seeing. That night, I wasn't afraid at all when I woke up, and it was gone by the time I turned the light on. Never told any of my roommates, and I've never told one other person before. Even writing it out, I'm doubting myself. All I know is that I love the hell out of that dog, and if there was something there, she put herself between me and it. A buddy and I saw, as clear as possibly could be, a white orb appear out of the air, slowly float up through the trees and disappear. I can explain the entire thing in detail if anyone is interested. I'm not a superstitious or religious person, but I've never heard a good scientific explanation. Ball lightning might be the best possible explanation. Cross posted answer from another sub asking a similar question. Might as well add mine to the bunch. I actually have two standouts, but I'll just start with one. I always had the terrible nightmares as a child, so I'm sure there were plenty of episodes, but this one happened in my mid-twenties and was terrifying. I was house-sitting for my parents at my childhood home, no big deal. They have a couple little whiny dogs that refuse to settle down and sleep without my dad since they slept with him every night. By about night three, I couldn't take it anymore and decided to sleep in my dad's room on the bed with them. I was sleeping on the couch prior to this and in all the years I've lived there, never slept in that room. In fact, I specifically picked the other bedroom as a child even though it was visibly bigger and had a beautiful lake view, my parents said I refused to take it. About two or three in the morning, I woke up to that low guttural growl dogs have that instantly makes your hair stand up. Keep in mind, these are little yappy dogs that bark constantly, but this was something entirely different. The room was cold as fuck. This is mid-July in the tropics, so like 95 outside. And even though I'd been dead asleep, I just knew something was wrong. Bad, bad wrong. Both dogs are growling nonstop, so I roll over and halfway open my eyes and see these two little kids in what looks like vintage baseball uniforms. I'm talking like turn of the century Victorian age type shit. There was nothing inherently scary about how they appeared, but the feeling of dread was almost indescribable. They're just looking at me, but somehow I knew that whatever these were, they were evil for lack of a better word. I honestly don't even know how to explain it but I just knew that something was very, very wrong with whatever I was seeing. The absolutely primal terror feeling told me this was not the harmless dream variety. I couldn't stop looking though. I swear I blinked 100 times trying to convince myself it was just a strange night terror until one half smiled at me. It was just a smile, but at the same time, it was like malicious and somehow just off. I just got this overwhelming urge that told me stop looking, close my eyes, pray, pray hard, and do it now. You have to understand, I'm very much not the religious or church type, and I just squeezed my eyes shut 
and prayed out loud like I never had in my life for what felt like forever. It finally passed, and about an hour later the dogs calmed down. As soon as I felt like it was safe to get out of that room, I called my parents and made them cut their vacation short and come home that day. My brother sleeps in there every night still with no problem, but something is wrong with that room. I'm not a big fan of the whole evil tropes, but I honestly don't have a better word for it. Whatever was there that night was evil. A couple months ago, I was exiting a Home Depot parking lot and saw a big truck coming in. I immediately knew what was going to happen and said out loud, driver has a blue hat and will honk the truck's horn twice while turning as a way to actually believe myself if it did happen. Well, guess what? I couldn't see the driver until the truck cleared the entrance, but when he did, I saw that he had a blue hat and did honk the horn twice as he was turning right beside me. Felt like an idiot for the whole day for saying out loud what I thought it was going to happen, but felt weirder when it did really happen. I'm driving around with a friend at night. We're both fairly newish to town. We're trying to find a particular place. I took the wrong bridge, so I do a U-turn at the end of the bridge and go back the way I came. But I wasn't going back the way I came. I was still driving in the same direction as before. I panicked and did another U-turn. I'm driving in shock. I eventually look over at my friend to see if she's noticed anything. She seemed unfazed staring at her phone. I spoke up. Did you notice that? Noticed what? When I first U-turned, I wasn't facing the right way. What? She looked puzzled. I dismissed the conversation after that. I never brought it up to her again. I'm still to this day so confused. I wasn't drunk or anything. It was like real life lagged or something. I don't know if it's related, but if I kept going that way, the bridge went, it would have been miles of woods with an Air Force base in the middle. Horses are weird. I grew up on a horse farm with a large indoor riding area. If there was an accident, like a horse breaking its leg, we would lay a tarp in the arena, bring the horse in if ambulatory, and wait for the vet to give their shot. Off to the glue factory, my dad would say. Roughly 500 meters past multiple walls are where the rest of the horses stay indoors. Anytime there's a horse who's sick or dying, they often whine and kick stalls. One time, a boarder's horse got the shot, and out of nowhere, the entire barn just started screaming. Multiple horses bellowing and scraping the stall doors with their hooves. It sounded like an equine massacre. Some were so upset, they broke into sweats and were just huffing away. It was cold, so when I opened the barn door to go to the back of the house, all the steam and condensation from the horse breath and sweat left the barn at once. Again, these horses had zero chance to see and could likely barely hear what was happening, and the neighing went off like an explosion super creepy. I'll go ahead and leave my story here as well. The house I grew up in, which my parents still own, was always very creepy. One night, I was standing in my room and I looked next to me. There was a little girl wearing a white nightgown and she had blonde hair. My mom had a daycare so I was always used to daycare kids. However, it was 11 p.m. and she was not a daycare kid. For some reason or another, I said, go back to your playroom. Then I realized what was happening and looked back and she was gone with the door slowly shutting itself. I've also had many sleep paralysis instances where I could open my eyes and see the floor next to my bed and see the legs and shoes standing there without being able to move. I told this story to a girl who lived next to me at a campfire one night and before I explained the girl, she came out and said, was she blonde with a white nightgown? She told me that she had also seen her at her house one night. My old house was a pretty large rundown looking house. The floorboards creaked and everything and it kind of looked somewhat like a haunted house but that's what my friends would say. But anyways, it was pretty late at night and I went downstairs to grab water, right? I heard some sort of breathing so I turned around and legit saw nothing. I followed where the breathing was coming from and it was from inside a fucking cupboard which scared the life out of me. I opened the cupboard, and I kid you not, I saw this thing crouching there, so I closed the cupboard and ran like anybody else would. The next morning, there was like no shit or nothing there, it was empty. So, uh, yeah, that's that.
LOL. I never really believed in ghosts. At this point, it feels like a dream. And I don't fucking know, dude. It was scary as shit. I'll provide you with different stories. Story number one. I was sleeping in my grandpa's old room. He recently passed away and his body in our tradition was outside in the hallway. The hallway did not have a door and literally was outside. Well, the fabulous fam decided to move his body closer to my window. The whole night I could hear footsteps. I then saw a shadow of a man with a hat walking back and forth. I'm a light sleeper, so I said all angry, Shut up! Let me sleep! Go to sleep or leave! LOL, the person left. Well, I found out my cousin thought she saw my grandpa walking around in the hallway, but she didn't understand as he was dead. So I guess we both saw my grandpa's spirit. I don't know. Story number two. My cousin used to stay up late studying, but would always go to sleep at 1 or 2 a.m., never any later. In Mexico, we have our showers and bathrooms outside of our house. So she had a habit before going to sleep to take a shower. Well, before she stepped out, she saw this lady in all black walking towards my grandma's room. She thought it was my grandma and followed, without saying anything because my grandma is slightly deaf, so no point in calling her. She went inside. Nothing. She then heard in the kitchen stuff moving. She goes in. Nothing but the door on the opposite side open. She goes in to close the door, then walks back to the original door and closes it as well. But before she did, she saw from the corner of her eye the same lady but standing inside. At that moment, my grandma comes out of her room, pulls my cousin inside, and tells her she got lucky the lady didn't get her. My cousin was confused and didn't go to sleep or take her shower. She stayed in my grandma's room. We'll later on my aunt opened the kitchen and on all the windows there were finger marks from inside, like someone was stuck trying to get out. It's not crazy, but I think it's the only one I've had, so... It was morning, and I was laying in bed still. My eyes were closed, but I was very much awake, just didn't want to get up yet, you know? I then heard a female voice say, Oh, there she is. Brief pause, then a quiet gasp. That made my eyes open quite quickly, and I looked to my door to see if my mom had come into my room or something, but no one was in the basement. It was a very clear voice, coming from across my room. I'm not sure what happened, but it was either an angel or something, or I was imagining things. The voice also gasped immediately after I had focused on it and was about to open my eyes, so I suppose they hadn't meant for me to hear them. Me and some friends were counselors at a music camp in Northern California, and we always stayed in the super old dorm that was a hospital at one point. My friend Nate was into those ghost hunting shows and we used to do this thing in the dorm late at night called an EVP session. Basically, you do an AMA with spirits and try to get them to answer questions while recording it hoping you pick up some paranormal audio. We never took it seriously. It was mostly something we did for fun after a few drinks. Well, one night, we start doing the session and we start hearing some of the bumps and sounds in relation to the question we ask. We are all still kind of joking around, going, yeah, right. But we can feel the room getting a little quieter. Then one of us asks, what is your name? A few moments go by, and we hear Nate ask, that was a joke, right? He had his headphones hooked into his recorder, and we sat watching him puzzled, because he had this look on his face. He heard something we didn't. After some discussion, we play back the audio through the speakers and on the recorder so everyone can hear. What is your name? We hear our friend ask. We hear in a whisper, but clear as a bell, something we didn't hear before. I'm Timothy. One of my friend's girlfriends growing up had a really cool house. She lived basically in a mother-in-law's suite with her parents in high school so it was nice to hang there because we could be as loud as we wanted. One night I went upstairs pretty late to go grab a snack and saw her mom at the top of the stairs to their room. I apologized and felt really bad because I didn't mean to wake her mom up. I went back downstairs and told my friend I hoped her mom doesn't yell at her and she was very frank in the fact that her parents were out of town 
and that I must have seen a ghost. I guess there's a ghost at the house who looks exactly like her mother, and they even have old records and photos of the families who lived there forever ago, and the resemblance is uncanny. I had a dream that I was at this cottage party, though I didn't recognize anyone there, but I knew them. All of a sudden, someone is knocking on the door, and about 20 people crowd around it. I'm walking up, and everyone turns to look at me, saying, they're here for you. I'm like, fuck this, no thank you, but I still go and walk up. It's this old lady kind of lying on the ground, as if she crawled up there. She's got stringy long legs and white eyes. I'm like, no thank you, good day ma'am, but I somehow feel comforted. I leave her at the door and walk to my room at the cottage, and there's this old man sitting in my bed. I'm like, okay, hey. He's like, Someone died recently in your life and you didn't get to say goodbye. Now is your chance. I look out the window and he's also there. I again feel comforted. Then my friend's dog woke me up. I definitely know this was about my friend who had passed away a month before. She had to stage four stomach cancer and died within a month of knowing. It's crazy what our subconscious can do. <laughs> 